Hello, welcome to another Valley Forged. Well, my extension kit came in, and boy, is it glorious. Just take a look at this. Take a look at the difference between how... I, this is my old bed, and this is the new one. And uh, it's just incredible of what you can do. So I'm going to go through uh, this and... I'm going to tell you what I feel is the positives and negatives about the extension kit. And uh, I'll go over it. And I got to say, though, off the, I love lasers. Everybody that watches this channel knows I adore lasers. So having this kit just makes me feel like I'm not playing with a toy anymore. I could do some larger things that I can hang on my wall. And it's just, it really opens up the imagination, but it also comes with some costs and not just financial, but I will get into all that as well. So as I said, it just no longer feels like a toy and this is well built. So, I mean, if this was just some normal extrusion you could get off the shelf or something, it probably wouldn't make me feel that way. But the way this entire laser is built just makes me feel like I'm working with something good now, as the picture shows here, I don't have the feet. I wasn't willing to shell out the $100 or even the $80 on sale for the feet. Uh, so if you look over here in my video, you can see I just put a couple of pieces of wood underneath the feet on the ends. It brings it above the motor and gives a little room for the, my material. And it was working fine. I have a pass through there. It's, uh, you know, I can cut down larger pieces of material, which was my problem. When you've only got 400 by 400, you've got to work with pretty small pieces of wood to, uh, you know, if you say you just want to cut them, you get a big sheet or something and you just want to cut them down. It makes it very difficult. But with this, far easier. I've already done it. The video that they put out for this extension right here, let's uh, pop over to that. There's two of them out. So I'm going to leave this one in the description because... One of them only goes over the actual uh, build of how to put it together, which is perfect. It works great. But then that's not going to tell you what to do in your Lightburn software, or your Gerbil, whatever you're using. Now, this particular video will go over all the steps to add this to make it look so glorious on your Lightburn. Um, I mean, look at all this space now that I have to work with. And it worked flawlessly. I followed this video. I had zero trouble. Now, many of you who have watched my video in the past about my ore tour and had the problems that I had, I'm very honest about it. I bought the machine with my own money. I bought the extension with my own money. This is completely how I feel about it. And I, you know, putting together the initial thing, it wasn't as easy. But putting together this extension, although... There is much to do here. I mean, you're basically almost rebuilding the whole machine. It did go really, really well. I think the only trouble I had was, well, I actually had two small problems. One, it, you, uh, it comes with an extension cable there for your uh, Y axis, I believe, that, that goes through the frame, right? Those two to come together. Well, it's easy for them to come apart, so when you're getting ready to plug it in, you may pull it to make sure that it's tight and everything's set. And what happened is I pulled it apart. And so in the middle of the frame is a pulled apart wire. So I taped it up. And then I realized if you tape it, then there's not enough room for it to get through. So just think about that when you're doing it. Uh, it did end up working out for me okay because what I did was I actually lubed it up a little bit on the sides and got it to go through fine. I just didn't want it to come apart again. Now, of course, you should probably use electrical tape, but then it would be way too fat to go through there. So uh, it's done is done, and uh, I'm happy with that. The other thing is with the cable management, just make sure that you've pulled it to the side as far as possible so that the, the large cable doesn't end up hitting against the belt. Uh, I know the Xtool D1 people know exactly what I mean there, but it wasn't too bad and it was pretty easy to pull over. And after I did that and then remember to put the belts back in the little uh, grooves here, I'm like, oh no, it's not working. <laughs> I just forgot to put it in the grooves. So once I did that, the thing worked like a charm. 
I got, yeah, really, really, really happy with it. I'm just, since I bought the uh, Ortur Laser Master 3, I have barely let this thing rest. It has just been going, going, going. I've been making projects. I can't be happier with this machine. It, it, you know, for the amount that I paid and for what I'm doing with it, it's uh, frankly phenomenal. And uh, even though I had some trouble with it in the beginning, I think that even made it better just so that I got to know the machine better. And I've made some, you know, changes on my own, which you can go and see on the video, my other videos. And uh, it's just, it's working like a charm, very consistent, very good cuts. So I'll let you know if that changes, but I'm, I'm using this thing like crazy. So my first project, I've been meaning to do something a little bigger. So I did this cat and I think it turned out good. I've only done the top layer and that's where I'm going to get into some of the negatives here is, uh, it takes up a ton more space. So you need to know that that's an obvious one, but just realize you're more than doubling the height of it basically. So you need to be able to act accordingly. You need a bigger space. You need to level the bed. A much bigger bed, right, needs to be level. And that's going to add some things. Fume extraction. If you've got this thing in, indoors and you've got a cover for it, well, that's not going to fit anymore. And you can't, the one that you buy from Ortur also is not going to fit. So unless you have this outside or you're willing to make your own concessions for that, it may be difficult for you to use this. So just something to think about. Uh, again, this is a Y axis, not a Z axis extension. So you can he see here on my light burn, it's going up and down. Well, that seems a little counterintuitive because for the most part, you're probably going to be making signs. And how rare is it that you're going to make signs going across? For the most part, you're going to want to flip things and go the long ways. So if you can't do that, so evidently in Lightburn, you can't change this orientation. So if like me, you've got it going the straight up and down way, just like you have it in Lightburn, maybe I wanted to turn it sideways so that I could see it like a sign. Well, that's just not possible to do a light burn. So it'd be a little bit difficult on the brain. Not impossible, of course. I'm going to go ahead and do it. But it's just something to think about. If anybody out there knows a way that you could change it without, come on, changing the motors or the wires to the motors or something like that, let me know. But I've looked around and it looks like you can't change this orientation. Another thing, you're going to need a new honeycomb bed. Now, having that super large honeycomb bed really, again, makes it feel like a solid thing that I can build so much with. But at the same time, they range from about $130 to $200 for that larger honeycomb bed. And so if you're going to add, you know, $180 to $200 for the extension kit, and then you're going to add another uh, $130 to $200 for the honeycomb bed, and then you've got to have a bigger piece of wood underneath it, and wood's not cheap these days. You know, you may be adding over $400 to a machine that only costs $600 or $700. Yes, you're way increasing the capabilities of that machine, but just realize you're starting to put a lot more money into it. Now, all of that money is still not going to get you into the equivalent CO2 laser, you're just not going to have this kind of space for anything less than, I'm guessing, $5,000. But, uh, you know, that is an expense. And large, thin boards, which is what you're likely to be using most of the time on a 10-watt laser, or even a 20, you're probably not going above 6-millimeter plywood. So that means that your boards are going to have a lot more likelihood of warping and warpage so that can be difficult when you're working in a larger space like this and you're making larger things. Now, if you're just making something that fits on a 400 by 400, the chances are that it's not going to be warped that much from corner to corner. And if you're working on a much larger laser, you can use quarter inch, you could use whatever you need to make it uh, less warpy. And also you can you could cut hardboard, which I have not had much luck on here. And uh, that's a much cheaper way to go 
than wood when you want to cut something and paint it. And it actually looks way better. So this is something I'm struggling with. I'm hoping that my new air assist system will eventually let me cut the hardboard. I'm going to test that probably in the next video. But warpage, something to think about. Also, a camera. Say you really want to use a camera on a 400 by 400 with your own enclosure. You could easily mount a camera and it will show you the whole thing. Well, imagine trying to mount a camera to show you this whole bed. Uh, I know it can be done, but it's going to be much more difficult. And I've looked up for you know people doing this. I haven't found any. So if you guys see a video of somebody that's doing it for the extended bed with a camera, I'd be very interested in seeing that. And if you have anything to add, like somebody making an extended enclosure for this, or, you know, like I said, the camera or anything else that's helpful when it comes to telling everybody about when you get an extended bed. But with all the expense and everything going on, I am super, super stoked to have the this extension kit, and I can't wait to do a lot of work. My first projects already made me very happy, and uh, this is only the first layer, of course. And again, you know, you're doing a three-layer piece, or even a six-layer piece uh, with a with a much larger bed. You are looking at a larger expense, uh, but I think it's worth it to have something really nice that you can hang on the wall that you can sell. So. I, maybe you would want to learn your laser and get to know things pretty well before you uh, decide to jump up to the extension so that you're not making huge mistakes instead of small mistakes. But that's just a thought. I uh, appreciate everybody here, and uh, I'll see you in the next one.